Hello everyone. In uh, today's session, uh, we will uh, talk about uh, how to consume and uh, expose uh, uh, services. Uh, and uh, this is a topic of uh, integration of D365 FinOps with external applications. So, uh, in this part, uh, I, I will need to uh, keep the parts short so that the uh, audience, they do not lose the interest. So, in this part one, I will uh, show how to create a service and uh, what is basically service uh, that need to be uh, defined. Uh, first of all, in background, we uh, would uh, uh, say that data entity allow to retrieve or create data. Basically, this is a DMF framework already and it contains uh, all data entities. Uh, basically, data entities are, uh, you can say, simpler form of uh, normalized uh, tables and uh, data entity uh, provides you a denormalized view so that, uh, for example, a vendor or a customer entity exists and you can easily migrate data from uh, data entity uh, in and out. So, uh, that is used to retrieve or create data and uh, whereas, basically, services, they allow us to run the code in D365 with uh, the run uh, by it means uh, to run a code means that uh, to run a business logic within D365 uh, while accessing it from uh, external applications and then it can also return a value or a list of values uh, and also it can uh, indicate whether that a specific operation was successful or not. So that indication or flag or message uh, would be returned. And uh, then there is an important part of security in this regard because uh, whatever application is accessing D365 need to be D365 need to be secure. Uh, the data need to be secure, and uh, the integrity of data need to be maintained. Uh, whether uh, you are talking about on-prem uh, or on-cloud solution, so then uh, consumer must have access to web service. Consumer can be an external application. Uh, uh, that is accessing D365 that need to have access to web service. This is a, uh, also important point. And uh, uh, the next point is about AX2012 and uh, the services already exist in uh, that version as well. Uh, but uh, XML was used, but in uh, D365 there is a shift from XML to JSON and uh, uh, which is uh, uh, a more compact, uh, compact form basically. Uh, so, uh, JSON is used to interact with uh, API in uh, D365. So, JSON is much, uh, the feature of JSONs are well known now because now it is becoming very popular. And uh, so, uh, so basically, J JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation and uh, is a faster way uh, to especially uh, data interchange. And basically, it is also concise and uh, encoded. Uh, and that requires basically once it is concise encoded definitely requires less bytes to transit from one place to another uh, whether it is from uh, end user browser client to the <coughs> cloud solution or on prem uh, application server so that uh, will definitely be compact uh, compact package so the communication will be much faster and uh, the parsers are also less complex and require less processing uh, time and memory uh, overhead. So, next uh, talking about creating a service first of all in this part. So, a service uh, contains basically a business logic class, a service class contains operations. Operations are nothing but, but just like uh, class methods and uh, when we refer to operation you can easily understand that it means a method, class method. And then there is a service group class and service group is combination of various services. And here also we define that it contains a set of services which act as a service reference. Uh, basically when it is consumed in an external application or within Visual Studio if uh, we are talking uh, external application uh, is developed in Visual Studio. Service group will be represented by a URI or uniform resource identifier that will be seen. Uh, that is nothing but a URL or a link uh, which can be accessed. And uh, <coughs> demo uh, basically uh, we will provide a demo here. And in our case of resort management system, basically we will create a service which will uh, uh, provide us a list of resorts 
it will return a list of resorts and then also we will perform resort group update service operation. So that is why I was uh, uh, preparing my videos for SIS operation specifically for resort group update. So that, that example can be carry forward in this uh, uh, service and integration part. So uh, we will be uh, using the same SIS operation class classes and if you have not seen those videos please uh, do check those videos uh, before reaching at this point because we will be using uh, those sys operation uh, classes namely controller contract class and uh, there is a process class and ui builder class and uh, as their name suggests basically controller is an entry point from where the instantiation happens of a process class or as well as uh, the contract class is uh, also uh, used for passing the parameters and uh, UI builder is used for uh, 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 user interface uh, basically or fields uh, where we have also implemented uh, uh, there is a logic that when once it is launched from form so one field uh, that was a resort ID would not be visible because it is passed but if it is uh, uh, called from periodic task so both fields that is resort ID and resort group ID would be visible. So, some of my viewers they have asked what is resort group. Basically, resort group is nothing just like if you have seen there are products and then there is uh, item groups uh, within D3 is 5. So, item group is a combination of uh, or multiple products can belong to a same uh, item group. So, item group is a superset of multiple items sim same way here we have made a resort group so that multiple resort can exist within their resort group. So, you can take an example of luxury resort group and then economy resort group. So, all the economy resorts will come under economy resort group and all the luxury uh, come under the luxury resort group. So, that is only for categorization or grouping purpose nothing else. So, now we will uh, turn to our uh, demonstration and uh, for that we will start uh, uh, Visual Studio and the resort management system uh, uh, is already open and uh, what we can do is uh, we can start by creating a new class here and uh, we can go to the add method and uh, add command and uh, choose the class here. So, here the class name will be PKR resort will be our prefix always keep uh, your prefix before like this one pkr underscore in your case you can uh, make your own prefixes but some of the viewers i have seen that they are also using uh, this prefix so no problem this is basically my name initial peer Kuram Rashti. so i have used this one and then resort is basically this uh, vertical or this uh, custom uh, module which i have developed resort management system that's why i put this uh, prefix resort so, for the new uh, viewers, this will be, uh, uh, you know, tip here. So, I will just uh, name uh, name the class a, as resort and uh, resort services or I can remove one resort here. So, this will become resort services. So, this is it and uh, I will add it. So, it will take a few seconds and uh, so what we will need to do is we will uh, create first service in order to update our resort, uh, resort group and uh, for which we already have a contract and a processing class which we have uh, created in our uh, last uh, videos which you can refer always. Uh, so, now what we can do is create a method here in this class and that method will be like public void. Public is access modifier, void is return type means there is nothing being returned here and uh, what we can name it as change resort group. Okay, And uh, now what we can do is change resort group and we will pass our uh, contract class underscore contract. 
So now what we can do declare uh, our uh, uh, main process class. So that was named as resort group change. So change group I will uh, put this uh, instance variable and then I will initialize with the new constructor for new programmers new means uh, this is a built in constructor when you create a, an object of that class so that constructor will initialize in this way we initialize our uh, pro process class which we have created in previous example so now change group we can call our run uh, method which we have created in previous example and then uh, pass the contract uh, to this run method. So now we also need to do some uh, error handling as well and then we can return a boolean on success or uh, uh, basically uh, uh, boolean on success or failure whatever uh, are the results and uh, a return contract uh, will be uh, used for the result status for for that purpose what we can do is we will create another class of contract type right click on the classes node and uh, create a class give it a name like pkr under is good resort message contract so now uh, you need to decorate this with the data contract decorator okay so this will tell uh, the class that you are a contract class and then we need to write a uh, few uh, line of codes In case of success, there is a flag of boolean type and then str, there will be a message of string type and then we need to uh, create a method that will return either true or false. The method name will be success and boolean success, this is a parameter. Uh, you should always underscore a parameter variable. This is a best practice and then <coughs> equals to success. It is the local uh, or global variable in this class. This will make it optional. Once you put an equal sign just like I have put here. So this will make this optional means when you are calling this to return uh, only value not to assign a value. So this will not be needed or it will not be mandatory. Just copy this chunk and uh, swap just terminate the statement and then return the success flag. So this will be written uh, whether it is true or false and also do not forget to uh, make this method uh, put a decorator here this is a data member so this will tell this method as a uh, data member similarly write another method and that method will return an string type that is that main message and uh, again uh, a parameter make it optional and then same way message equals to pass message will be assigned and return will be the global variable that is now assigned just make it a small case so now this is uh, done here you can go back to resort services uh, uh, class so what we can do is after uh, this statement of uh, we have initialized our class here and uh, we need to also 
initialize our uh, contract class which we have just created pkr resort message contract and uh, give it a name like message and then initialize this with the same class name okay this is now done here so now before uh, run statement you need to put a try catch try catch is basically an error handling chunk uh, which will basically in try block you will put a code and if there are exception it will go to the catch uh, block just like this so within the try statement we need to put our code here so just cut and paste here now what we can do is in within the try we will put an if uh, clause and uh, the contract which is now passed here we need to call the validate of that contract and in addition to that one uh, we'll also call here our change group validate method so both validate method will be called here and then uh, what we can do is call the run uh, statement afterwards once the validate is successful and uh, once it is run definitely uh, afterwards it will the control will come to the next statement so then we'll uh, uh, call the success method of our message instance of the class and we'll pass a true uh, parameter here and uh, of course we need to put an else clause as well if it is not if the validations are not passed so then it will come to the else uh, block so in that case directly we can put our uh, message as false definitely just like this one and uh, then we need to also pass a message so that need to be a string which we need to create a label against which uh, we need to create a label and uh, that's it okay and in case uh, we will just create uh, the label in a moment and we'll go to the catch statement and in the catch statement again message success false need to be pasted here as well because in case of exception directly it will come to catch catch can also contain a bracket to specify that specific exception but now we are having uh, we are not uh, making it specific so only catch will suffice and here also there will be need of passing a message also and uh, then what we need to do is so this change resort group uh, change resort group did not contain any return type at this stage but we'll uh, pass a return type as well and that will be basically this class type so in this way then we need to put a return here return statement and in return statement the instance of uh, this class that is resort message contract will be returned so this is how we have done it and uh, still the labels are uh, not yet uh, created we will create the labels just open the label file so i think there there is some error as well yeah there is a bracket missing so just wait a moment so now we need to just create a label uh, for this and uh, the label can be like uh, the zord group percent one could not be updated for resort 
person two, and then the label wizard group could not update. Just copy this and uh, go to the services class. Also put a bracket here which I missed. Save it. Okay, now within this message we can put this uh, label and uh, also we need to use a string format function and uh, pass this label and uh, then we need to pass our uh, basically from uh, our contract parameter first of all the resort group id and then as a second parameter that can be param resort id so that the information uh, relevant information that is what a resort group or resort id was uh, being updated can be uh, displayed to the end user so we can just copy this whole thing and put here because both are similar thing just save it if there is any error it will show up so yeah there is an error it is showing yeah so the there need to be a parenthesis that need to be placed so these getter setter or param method they must need a para, uh, parenthesis because this is a method call so now we have implemented our uh, services class and uh, next what we can do is uh, we need to return a list of uh, resource uh, that will be an additional feature uh, so basically that will uh, return a list of uh, contracts and each contract will be uh, presenting uh, a resort record so for what we need to do is uh, we will need a contract basically to store the resort data so we will need to create a contract now so there are lots of lots of classes we are creating in this example so no problem just go and add a class give it a name pkr resort table contract so resort table means uh, basically the table in which the resort records are uh, the primary or master records are uh, entered and that contract represents the record in that table so we'll create a class and here we need to decorate this with a data contract decorator okay and then we need to define here all our edts so just let me open the edt node first edt can be like resort id that will represent resort id and then we can put a let me open the table here So resort ID then there was a name field and uh, what was the EDT for that field yeah name EDT was used so we'll again use the name EDT here and this will be our resort name and then we need to resort registry number just uh, do the indentation okay so after uh, registration uh, registry number uh, then there are certain uh, you know dates uh, edts like acquisition date need to be also 
put here PKR resort acquisition date. Again, do the indentation so that it is readable. Okay, then uh, what we need to put here basically there were base enums as well. So, the, these will be resort type cost wise and resort type location wise. Both are fields. Location wise, resort type location wise. So, both are fields. I can show you type cost wise, type location wise, registry number, acquisition date, and group ID is the remaining one. So, that uh, is basically PKR resort group. So, in this way we have uh, declared our variables for uh, the contract and now we need to uh, create the param uh, methods for all these uh, variables. So, I will just complete it and we will continue from uh, the same point. So, I have uh, uh, completed our uh, contract class and uh, that will basically represent the resort table uh, all the fields actually we could have used uh, the table also as a contract but uh, since uh, making it as a you know contract class and all the param methods gives us uh, greater control over uh, you know uh, various uh, uh, values so that's why we have created a contract class uh, here and uh, now uh, what we can do go to our uh, I will show you briefly how it looks basically uh, just like other contracts uh, you need to have a you know param uh, method and uh, it is good to give it a name like uh, param instead of uh, only field names. So, this is the standard practice I always uh, suggest this one. So, you can meanwhile see how the methods looks it is just like other uh, examples which we must have done uh, before like in SSRS or uh, in the sys operation uh, uh, the videos. So, that is a similar case here. So, in this way we have completed and uh, basically you should always make uh, the parameters optional otherwise data member uh, decorator will give you an error. So, only optional uh, need to be done in this contract. So, this is how we have completed by defining all the fields as a param method and all the you know the global variable in this class we have declared against all the fields. Now, what we can do is go back to our uh, services class and uh, what we can do is we need to define here. Uh, we have already defined a method change resort group. So, apart from this method we need to define another uh, method for uh, uh, you know resort list. Uh, for that you can start with public access modifier that can be called from other classes and the return type of list and then you can put uh, get uh, resorts that will return a list of resorts and then you should also decorate this and uh, decorate basically need to go before the uh, method uh, name. So, basically we cannot uh, return array of uh, uh, classes in uh, FinOps uh, just like we do in C sharp. So, we need to construct basically a list uh, by using a loop and then uh, uh, that need to be 
uh, we need to tell the uh, compiler the type that the list basically contains. So, this need to be done by using AIF collection type attribute. So, that attribute we need to add here uh, just uh, as a decorator AIF collection type and just uh, parameter name as a string uh, that need to be return and uh, types will be classes for type will be the class for contract class and then we need to define the name of contract by using class str method so that the name of class is written so that will be resort table contract class in our case uh, close the parenthesis and close the attribute or uh, decorator save it so that if there are any error that will be displayed so this uh, is asking a return type which we will uh, do here and before that we need to declare a local variable of a list type uh, that will contain basically resort resort list and same need to be returned okay so that error is gone now we need to populate this uh, resort list for that we need to first of all declare our resort table pkr resort table table buffer need to be declared here that will be iterated later on in order to populate the list okay so then we need to also declare the class instance variable resort table contract contract will be the variable name just do the indentation okay so now what we can do instantiate our uh, resort list instance with the new constructor that is a built-in constructor and with the list class and give it a name like a types of class from this enum value and then iterate while by using while select resort table and put up uh, curly brackets now what we can do is we need to initialize our contract every time uh, for each of the rec record so the contract will be initialized for each param method we need to pass the field value to the param method just like starting uh, with the contract dot resort uh, the, that would be param resort id and then resort table dot resort id this will be the field value that will be passed so in the same manner we can uh, do for everything all the fields resort table dot resort or name i think yeah contract param group resort group id need to be that need to be group id resort type cost wise type cost wise will go here it will be an enum value and then a resort type location wise so that need to be resort type type location wise how many are there there are six and we need to just count our uh, 
there are seven basically registry number and acquisition date is missing. Registry number and then acquisition date. This is our first parameter. So, I think uh, everything is now covered. Uh, So, this will uh, populate our uh, uh, list, uh, it will populate the uh, basically the contract here and at the end we need to perform the main thing here is resort list uh, add and so that the at the end of list the class object contract will be inserted in the list. In this way, this uh, whole list will be populated and that will be returned uh, by this method that is get, get resource from the external application. So, now we have uh, basically uh, two methods here. So, one is in order to change the resort group uh, that will perform a business logic within D365 and return a value success or failure. Uh, that will be uh, basically in case of failure that will be uh, value uh, the message will be returned and in case of uh, success we have not yet implemented any uh, message here. So, that will be already uh, successful and uh, this other method will return a list of resorts and that we have implemented using a contract class and populating that contract and each time we will insert that contract within uh, our list. So, so now what we can do is uh, we need to add a service. So, we can go to the uh, project node add uh, item go to the new item and then we can go to the services node here and you can see service group and service both uh, objects are here AOT objects are here. And uh, from here what we can do is just choose the service and uh, give it a name like PKR resort and uh, then services resort services and just add it. So, the service will be added with the node of service operations here and uh, now we need to just uh, select the root here and uh, then what we can do is we need to set a property in the property uh, panel and we can go to this lookup and uh, select our services class. You can just put the PKR resort. So, here is our uh, resort services class. So, we have selected it. And uh, then we need to put a small description here that can be provides services for resorts. And then uh, there is a property external name and uh, that is a basically simpler form of service name. So, that will be uh, shown within a service group. So, but we do not need to prefix it. Uh, so, we, what we can do is, is we will put here resource services or resort services use a singular here resort services. So, this description and uh, this will be the external name and uh, then what we need to put in the name space this is a value just do not uh, uh, you know think whether it is a uh, actual uh, link but just need to put this schemas dot contoso dot com and then pkr resort management system or just like this. So, the URL does not need to be exist and it, it will only be used as a namespace.
so resort management system uh, i think is enough resort ms or whatever you like uh, but it should be abbreviated smaller uh, uh, you know alias so now what we can do is just save it and uh, then right click on uh, services operation and then we need to create a new service operation okay so now uh, in the name uh, property what we can do in the name property we need to put a name just like a method uh, method means the two methods which we have implemented we need to uh, put those names here so there is uh, let me open it just close this close also this this is our the, these are two methods so just put this uh, get resorts so this will be the name of uh, this uh, service operation and uh, also for uh, next service operation again we need to just create and uh, put the name of the method here so that it uh, correspond to the other service operation as i have already told you in the beginning that service operation is nothing but the methods of method cl class methods so in this way so now in the get resource we need to select our uh, method of get resource and uh, in the same manner here also we need to select our change resort group method basically the class is already selected so that's why the methods are automatically shown here so once you have done this uh, we need to just save and uh, just close this close also everything we need to also create a service group so just uh, this services class need to be placed in uh, the classes folder in same manner you can create a new uh, folder as well give it a name like services and the service groups sorry that need to be a folder go to add folder and uh, put here the name like service groups okay so now drag and drop this uh, services to services folder and uh, within the service group you need to add a new item go to the services node and uh, select this services group and uh, here what we can do is put ekr resort services so this will be a service group here and uh, we need to also set the properties go to the description and here we need to enter the name for this and uh, that can be a resort management resort management services make it a small case okay resort management services in the description and uh, then what we can do is we need to drag and drop the service which we have already created within this uh, res uh, service group so in this way we have uh, placed our uh, one uh, service into this service group and in the same way if you create more uh, service classes uh, and then create the service against those th those can also be placed within this one service group basically that is a grouping of various services so once this is done 
uh, we can uh, then also do one more thing is that from the name here we can remove the prefix here why because already the services group is having the prefix so within that no need of every time uh, prefixing uh, the method when already at the higher level the prefix is already existing so now that's it and uh, we can just close it and uh, compile it compile it if there are any errors and uh, uh, by building it so <laughs> that's it for now and we will continue our example uh, to the next level uh, by consuming uh, our service in the next uh, video so stay tuned and uh, thank you very much guys take care bye bye